All right, here we go with section seven of chapter two. Here's the focus question. By 1600, the traditional view of English liberties as a set of privileges limited to certain social groups was competing with the notion uh, that certain rights of Englishmen applied to everyone in the kingdom. This latter tradition rested on the Magna Carta of 1215, in which the king had given rights to all free men in England, including protection against arbitrary imprisonment and the seizure of property without due process of law. Over time, this document came to signify a particularly English freedom, embodied in common law rights such as habeas corpus and trial by jury, whereby the king was subject to the rule of law and all persons enjoyed security of person and property. As the serfdom characteristic of feudalism receded, increasing numbers of more Englishmen were considered freeborn and entitled to these rights. Political and religious divisions within 17th century England heightened the meaning and importance of freedom there and in the colonies. The belief in freedom as a common English heritage and the British Empire as the world's guardian of liberty helped to legitimize colonization in the Western Hemisphere and cast imperial war against Catholic rivals as a struggle between freedom and tyranny. The struggle for political supremacy between Parliament and the Stuart monarchs James I and Charles I culminated in the 1640s in the English Civil War. Disputes over how and to what degree the Church of England should distance its, itself from Catholicism, and struggles over the respective powers of Parliament and the King, including the King's power to impose taxes without Parliament's consent, provoked a military conflict that ended in a victory for pro-parliamentary forces, the abolition of the monarchy, and the execution of King Charles I. The victors established a commonwealth and free state, ruled by Oliver Cromwell, that lasted almost a decade. In 1660, the monarchy was restored and Charles II assumed the throne. Political strife and upheaval in England in these years produced a rigorous debate about liberty that expanded the boundaries and definitions of freedom. The writer John Milton called for freedom of speech in the press. Some religious sects emerged that called for universal Protestant toleration. A movement called the Levellers proposed a written constitution abolishing both the monarchy and House of Lords and extending the franchise to those without much property. A more radical group, the Diggers, advocated the common ownership of land. Though the Levellers and Diggers were quickly suppressed, some of their ideas were carried to, Eng uh, pardon me, to America by English emigrants. While most New Englanders sided with the Parliament uh, in 1640s, many Puritan leaders in the colonies were leery of the revolutionaries and the Commonwealth's tolerance for religious dissent. When followers of Anne Hutchinson became Quakers, a radical and spiritually egalitarian Protestant sect in England that defied Puritan doctrines, Massachusetts leaders tried to suppress them by banishment, whipping, and hanging. After the restoration of the monarchy, Charles II reaffirmed the charter and ordered toleration of the Protestants. Execution ceased, but other efforts to suppress the Quakers continued. During the English Civil War, Virginia sided with Charles I and fell under Cromwell's control. In Maryland, the Civil War exacerbated pre-existing conflict between Catholic and Protestant settlers and anti-proprietary sentiment, feeding a civil war within that colony. Calvert stabilized Maryland and attracted more settlers by empowering Protestants in the colony's government and guaranteeing religious toleration for all Christians. Under Cromwell and the Commonwealth, England adopted aggressive policies to expand its colonies, promote Protestantism, and empower commerce in the British Isles and New World. Cromwell's army extended English control in Ireland in the process massacring civilians, banning Catholicism, and seizing Catholics' land. England also seized the valuable sugar island of Jamaica and passed the Navigation Acts in 1651, intended to challenge the commercial supremacy of the Dutch by limiting England's colonial trade to English ships and ports. The vast majority of the continent was still controlled by Native Americans in 1660. Europeans inhabited colonies in New Mexico, Florida, Quebec, Montreal, and Virginia and Massachusetts. The Haudenosaunee were more feared than any European power. They had Dutch weapons and launched wars against neighboring tribes. Native Americans developed new forms of diplomacy, including the Calumet ceremony to make strangers into fictive kin and the use of wampum strings and belts to forge alliances of reciprocity. So that's the end of chapter two, and I'll see you guys next time.